So this is probably going to be a little weird for just a second. Quiet me. All right, let's move this over here. Can I, can you, can you be quiet? Hi, guys and dolls. <laughs> I have not streamed on YouTube in freaking ages. Uh, uh, and the reason we're doing this over here instead of on Twitch, which is where I normally stream if you're interested in video game stuff, all that's down below. Uh, the reason we're doing it here is because it's book related stuff. And this is where I've been posting my book related content. So I thought, okay, well maybe we'll do it over here. Um, so today, what we're gonna be working on is the magic systems for this world that I'm building. Um, for those of you who are coming in and you are used to video game content from me, uh, I'm writing a few books. Um, I've written one, actually, and most of another one. And I have probably eight that I want to be set in this world. Um, and those are just the ones that I've come up with that I know about. So uh, we're, uh, I didn't think to send out <laughs> the notices before. So let me do that real quick. YouTube live stream. Magic systems, and we'll send that out because why not? All right, put that on what Facebook and Twitter, and why not? I'm so bad at social media guys like so so bad at it so so bad at it all right so uh, they have changed the how do I put this they've changed the um, way that YouTube live streaming works so I'm not entirely sure that this is working correctly so we'll find out Hopefully, hopefully we'll find out. Um, so I sent the notices out. What are we doing? I probably could like, what? Is this working? This, this is what I need. Okay. Well, I sent the wrong link out, but that's okay. <laughs> You know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, what was I doing? Oh, right. So basically what I want to do is three different magic systems, right? Um, and originally I had planned on just having the one and then I was like, no, I want to do the second one. And I know specifically like where I want it to be based in and I want it to be extremely limited. And it's like, well, there's this other stuff that I'd like to be included in the world. And it doesn't really fit into the categories or limitations of each of the other systems that I want to build. And I want them to be limited because I think that that um, makes things more interesting, right? So, what we're going to do is build three different systems. We're going to have witchcraft, which is going to largely be um, blood magic and sort of crafting magic, which sounds really weird, but when I say crafting magic, I mean things like making potions, making charms, making, um, doing what I'm going to be calling fate weaving, which is where you sort of, um, weave in or, uh, bind in changes to the future that um, it takes time and you have to have the right ingredients and they have to be the right quantities and right qualities and and you know as you're sort of making this stuff as you're sort of making these things um, that you would need uh, the right intentions right like you have to stay focused on it and if for some reason your focus wanders or your intentions aren't pure you know maybe you're like oh you know, I, I really want um, this guy to fall in love with me, 
right? So you so you make this this love potion. But while you're making the love potion, you get kind of distracted about being angry at the fact that he already has a wife and maybe like you have this latent anger or, or bubbling anger inside of you um, that you're angry that he has a wife and you kind of direct a little of your ire towards her while you're making the potion. Well, then you give him the potion and rather than him just falling in love with you, he might be inspired to kill his wife because your intention was distracted or impure while you were making the potion. So that sort of concept is what I'm going for. Um, where it's not just what you have that matters, it's how you use it um, and, and how focused you are and how well you do it, right? Uh, let me see if I can fix this. Yeah, let me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I posted the wrong link, y'all. <laughs> Magic system. Uh, and I've got a soda here. I don't drink a ton of pop. I try like not to have more than, hey, our client, what's up? Long time no see, dude. Um, I try not to have more than one a day, but um, I got a little, I'm a little shaky. So I'm assuming it's because I need more sugar maybe my blood pressure is a little low or something I don't know I don't know I don't know why did I okay let me let me get rid of this bad pose that I did incorrectly it's y'all I am not a professional doing this like I'm just <laughs> making a damn mess oh goodness okay well hopefully I've not um messed it up too bad hopefully we'll see all right hey tooties what's up i'm sorry about the links being all funky guys oops let's put that there too um what did i miss i feel like No, not there. Um, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I can't focus today. Like, I don't know what my problem is. Anyway, okay, so witchcraft. Um, I want it to be limited to having the right materials and how focused you are on what you're doing and what it's for, right? So it's, it's in you, you have to have the magic to do it. But if you do, it's not just, oh, I have the magic, I can do it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Are the funky links? Well, yeah, Arclight, I kinda, um, basically what happened was, see, <laughs> YouTube kind of um, stopped promoting streamers. So basically like I was still doing all the same amount of work, but like, by myself and with no um what is he going over out out what's he going off on over there i don't know anyway so uh youtube did this big push on like oh youtube gaming youtube streaming we're gonna go live streams and then they just kind of like stopped giving a shit about it and um, stopped putting it in feeds. So it used to be if you were subscribed to somebody, like over in that right hand feed, if somebody that you were subscribed to was live, it'd pop it up to the top, like, hey, this person you're following is going live um, or is has gone live. And then they just stopped doing that. So, oh, good, 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 good. Um, so yeah, it, it became not worth the energy that it was taking to do it. So uh, I moved over to Twitch, which had the same rough audience size as I was having on YouTube, but it was more catered to gaming. Um, yeah, and it just it just suited doing gaming better. So um, I've been doing a bunch of, yeah, yeah. 
so I've been doing a bunch of um I did a bunch of gaming stuff but that would have been like 2016 2017 and then um you know life kind of inter intervened and I got busy doing other stuff and mm. it's not that I'm not playing video games anymore I am just not as much as I was right now I'm working on writing a bunch of books um so that's what we're doing is, is world building and, and working on the magic system for the books that I'm writing. Um, okay, so that's witchcraft, right? That, that's the basic premise of witchcraft. I have some notes here that I was writing while I was um, in Austin a couple weeks ago. Um, so the second magic system I'm calling sorcery, but it's not sorcery in the like classical sense, right? Like. Really? Shit. Have you have you always been Heather Poe? <laughs> groceries are on the way, sweetheart. More mm -hmm. groceries are on the way. Oh, okay. Um Really? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense with the icon and everything. I'm like, I know, I know that icon. It must be a guy I know because I recognize the name. Well, um, thanks for, you know, giving me a hard time. I appreciate that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So, um, so here's the premise of the sorcery, right? Number one, it's not like shooting fireballs and like lightning out of your eyes and whatever. Like, that's not what we're doing. Um, what we're doing is going to be things like potentially necromancy, um, earthquakes, floods, locusts, um, sort of biblical world influencing magic. And the reason it's so big rather than finite, like you can't throw a fireball, but you might be able to get a fire to start. Does that make sense? So like I can't throw a fireball at you, but I might be able to get your house to set on fire. I can't shoot lightning out of my hands, but I might be able to get lightning to start striking around you or in your general area, you know, that sort of stuff. What's up, Ginch? Holy crap, how are you, dude? Long time no see. Oh, how are you? Sweetheart. All right. Um. So that's, that's what we're going with. In order to have access to this particular type of magic. So the witchcraft is hereditary. You inherit it from your mother. It's matrilineal um, for the most part, with exceptions. Um, the sorcery is the result of you pledging yourself, binding yourself, and or otherwise securing for yourself some type of uh, divine being patron. So that may be uh, like an angel or a god or a demigod or a demon or something like that. Um, you need something that is big and powerful to allow you to use their magic. So it's not your magic. You have just learned to access it and focus it on a specific thing. Does that make sense? So with the witchcraft, you have the magic within you. It's, it's tied to your blood. The sorcery, it's not your magic. You have convinced some other entity to allow you to access a very, very small portion of what they have. Um, so that's those two. The, no, we're talking about all of them. The shamanism is nature magic. So it is inherent in you. Some people are better able to access it than others. It may be um, bloodline related or culturally related, I think, and the shamanism is newish to me. I haven't quite fleshed it out yet. So that's why we're doing this today. Um, to me, the shamanism is very ritual centric. Um, it may require certain types of purification in order to do anything. Um, and maybe I don't see it as like, it's not D and D type magic. None of these are D and D type magic, but they are kind of like old world concepts of magic. So like the witches can do curse work, but it's not like I'm gonna pull a voodoo doll out and stab you, and you're gonna like 
feel like you're being stabbed. It's not like that, but I might make a puppet of you and stab it in the knee. And like next week on Tuesday, you might step on a rock funny and twist your knee, right? So that sort of thing, none of it's very fast. Um, that, how come I'm on YouTube and not Twitch? Um, I, I'm trying to like get the stuff consolidated. So like I may separate it and do Twitch for like gaming stuff or maybe drawing stuff and then try to keep the book stuff on YouTube rather than like downloading these massive files and transferring them over. Cause I want my book stuff to be on YouTube so that it's all in one place, but it's really kind of a pain to like, cause with Twitch for the affiliate thing, you have to wait two weeks after you've streamed it before you can post it anywhere else. And like going back two weeks later, I have to download the whole file and then I have to upload it to YouTube. And sometimes it's corrupt and sometimes it doesn't work real well. And it's a big pain in the butt. So. I think if I'm doing book stuff, I'm just going to keep it on YouTube. This is what I'm planning, right? Like what, what actually happens? Who the fuck knows? Uh, pardon my language, by the way. I, I do kind of have a cursing mouth. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's, that's our three basic types, right? You've got the witchcraft, which is tied to your blood, matrilineal specifically. Um, You've got the sorcerer, which comes from a third party entity. It's not your magic. You're basically borrowing it. And then you've got the shamanism or druidism, which I think is going to be like family based, right? Like there are maybe certain family lines that have it. I haven't quite worked that out yet. So um, by the way, I'm, I'm very interested in like having a conversation about this and like seeing what you guys think. So, um, Rather than me just being like, oh, this is how it works. If I'm like, yeah, I don't really know. If you have suggestions and you're like, okay with me potentially implementing your suggestion in the book that I'm writing, say so. Just because you say it doesn't mean I'm going to use it. But if you're comfortable with me using it, why the heck not? You know? Yeah, Twitch's VOD system is awful. Like, you don't have the ability to be like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, Tooties. Yeah, I, I have my um, Twitch VOD turned on just because there's no reason not to. I have more people that go back and watch them after I've streamed than actually watch them when they're live. It's a weird thing. I'm the only person that I know. I know a lot of people who stream on Twitch. I'm the only one I know who is in that situation. No, you cannot. Not without being in violation of your affiliate agreement. Like, there are people who do it, but you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't. And it's just not, it's not worth it to me to, like, try and skate around the system. You know what I mean? Like, it's their system. They don't charge me to use it, so the least I can do is play by the rules. That's just me. I'm a, I'm a rule follower, though. I'm not, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not particularly inclined to like try to get around things. That's just not how I'm made. Um, and, and some of it's just like, I'm not bold enough. And some of it's, I don't like the consequences when, <laughs> when you break the rule. What's wrong with you? Hmm? Are you just like that too, Tooties? Oh, it's not just me. The official stalking. Dun, dun, dun. I think it's that I stream at funky times, to be honest. I think it's just like I stream whenever I have uh, the time and energy, which is usually a little earlier in the day. And then most people, when they're consuming content, it's like after they get home from work, after they get home from school. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the rules of each of these systems. I'm a big proponent of um, magic having boundaries within which it operates. So I don't want to create a world where oh, this isn't going my way. I'll just wiggle my fingers and whoop, magic fixed it. You know, I don't like that. Um, that's boring to me. I think that that's okay in books written for younger people, but this is intended to be stories for adults, stories for people like my age, you know? Um, so I don't, I'm not really interested in intentionally making a magic system where magic can solve problems. To me, most of this magic will cause more problems than it solves with the exception of potentially shamanism, but it's so long-term and so ritualistic. And so like, it takes such a long time for you to do anything with it that you're not like, you know what I mean? 
you stream at Australia times. I think you know what's funny, Tooties? I kind of do too. <laughs> All right, so rules of witchcraft. Rule number one, because I did start to write these down and then um, I did start to write these down and then it was like, screw this. I will share this with other people. Okay, it must be passed down through blood. Through blood and let's call it a recessive trait so that uh okay maybe not a recessive trait i'm gonna say it's generally firstborn female because i want it to be matrilineal right um and and i'm okay with there being exceptions like i have an exception in the book um the not not this one where's the other one got another one in uh, down here somewhere oh there it is come here so for this one this book here not this one this one i know um i'm a, I'm a paper gal um there is a set of twins that was born it was a boy and a girl um and they were both born with magic and they're kind of an oddity he wasn't supposed to have it everybody was really scandalized by the fact that this little boy had magic so they did something horrible to him um yeah by the way i don't know how comfortable you guys are with spoilers so i will try to keep things vague enough so that you kind of get a feel for the story without actually divulging all the secrets that to me like so the witches, for example, turn him into a, uh, a familiar. They turn him into an animal and then bind him to his twin sister. Um, and that's like really early in the book that you understand that that's what's happening basically from page one. So there's not really, it's not really a spoiler. So if I'm giving details like that, I'm not messing up the ending or like the main story or anything like that for you. I, I'm just not like... Some of it's because I don't know what that is quite yet. Like, I know how it ends, but I haven't written the ending yet, if that makes sense. That part I have written, and it's early on, so. All right. Uh, rule number two. The magic doesn't always work if your ingredients are flawed or your intentions are <laughs> skewed. It may not work, or it may work in unexpected ways. All right, so that's rule number two. Rule number three. Ah, okay, here you go. Rule number three, everything that you can do with witchcraft can be undone, either by magical means or mundane. What's oh wow? What are we oh wowing? There's a slight delay, so I can't always uh, pay attention or keep up with what's going on if it's not, um, if there's no context clues <laughs> around it. What are we oh wowing? <laughs> All right, so that's rule number three. Everything that you can do with the witchcraft can be undone by some means. It may be magical, it may be mundane, you don't know. What's the scope of the story? Is it mass a story with multiple overlapping subplots? Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the story that I have finished that is currently in editing, that's this thing right here, right? This crazy with lines all over it. Uh, that one is pretty linear. They're all in the same world. They're all in Tiernock. Um, but my first one that I wrote is, is pretty simple. It's pretty clean. Um, it's just the one main, I, I would say the main trio. There's like three characters that are like best friends and you sort of follow them when they go on raids and war parties and that sort of thing. It's a very tribal, it's set in the stone age of this world. Um, anyway, so it's very linear. You're, you're following her story as she sort of goes through. I, I would say it happens over the course of about a year. Um, and then the second one that I started is significantly more complex. It is part of a three book series. Um, and each of the three books covers about a decade. Um, so there's, hold on, Kamti and Koa and Yata and Nanua and 
Willem and Natalia and Amalric and Alonia. So there's like eight characters um, in the second one. But it's a it's a three book series and it's sort of this weird overlapping thing where like characters from multiple parts of the world all wind up in the same place and because of the way that they're interacting you know world changing events occur because these people wind up in the same place does that make sense mm. oh yeah yeah and she's not nice she she's a nasty nasty woman she's not mean for the sake of being mean she is um, selfish and power hungry. Like she's in charge of their tribe. And so because she's been in charge, she wants to remain in charge. And then um, she has a daughter and then her daughter has a son. And her daughter's not supposed to have a son. Her daughter's supposed to have a daughter. So she gets pregnant again. And while she's delivering the second child, she dies in childbirth. So she loses her daughter and her granddaughter. Um, and her legacy is basically over. That's it. That's the end of their family line. That's the end of their magic. Um, so because she has no female descendants, she only has a grandson who is non-magical. Um, she has to find a way to try and retain her grasp on the tribal leadership um and so she concocts this thing where she is going to have a hunt for her grandson and then um all of the girls in the tribe who are witches and are coming of age and don't have somebody secured basically to serve as their familiar, she's basically gonna give her grandson to them. And so she sends him out into the woods and sends these girls after him and basically says, whoever can bring him back gets him. And that's how she decides she's going to bind herself or tie herself into another magical family. And that's how she plans on retaining power. It doesn't go quite the way she expects it to, but that's her plan, right? Um, so she's not a nice woman. There's not a lot of caring or tenderness in her heart. Um, yeah, she's she's an interesting character. She's been really interesting to write. It's not that she is completely heartless. It's that she is willing to... She is willing to accept a substantial amount of collateral damage in order to get what she wants. Yeah, that's McCompty. She's a terrible, horrible person. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yes? What did you think I was doing? <laughs> you were busy. I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, okay. So, everything you can do with witchcraft can be undone either by magical means or mundane. Next roll. Oh, we've already got whether or not it fails. Okay. So, I think... I think that is... Fine. Right? What the gray? What did you think I was doing? <laughs> okay. So to me, the witchcraft is going to be basically you have to have the right ingredients and you have to have the right intent and those things come together and all things being done correctly, it works the way that you want. Now, it's not going to be immediate. It takes time. Um, but as long as you perform everything perfectly, it will go the way you intend it to. Nobody's perfect, right? So it's never going to go quite the way you expect, which lends an element of things not being in your control all the time, which I really like. Who has it and how do they get it? Okay. Firstborn daughters, rare exception. It passes to a son in the event of twins, right? Um, okay, types of magic. Okay, so here's some examples, right? Like you may make a charm, a protection charm. You might make a love potion. You might um, say I'm a, a 
king or a tribal leader or something like that and i'm gonna go into a big battle and i know you know i'm gonna march my people into this war and i want success as the witch that's serving as that leader's advisor you might um, do what I'm going to be calling fate weaving, which is like um, you sort of make the threads or yarns like an azure spinning it like the, the sheep may have been slaughtered in a specific way or um, harvested in a specific way. And then, um, you know, maybe their their blood is used or maybe soil is used or whatever. Something is applied to the, the threads as you're as you're spinning them. And then you take those threads and you weave them into a tapestry or into uh, a length of fabric or something like that and then while you're weaving you know you're using these ingredients and you're thinking about what it's what you want to happen and you're you know really focused on the success of your king and his armies and then at the end of it perhaps the king wears this fabric that you've woven as a shawl and that sort of helps him manifest the magic that you've woven into it, right? So it's a multi-step sort of slow crafting process, right? And he may not necessarily like, you know, they're not necessarily gonna mow their enemies down or whatever, but it may help assure his victory or it may help assure he doesn't die, you know? So it just kind of depends on how good he is at, or how good you are at weaving the spell and how good he is at trusting that the magic is going to do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, so the sorcery. Let's look at the sorcery and the way that we kind of talked about it. So the sorcery, like we said, comes from a third party. It's not your magic. You have um, convinced some divine entity, some celestial being, some something else like a demon or a god or something like that to allow you to use their magic. So that's rule number one. Um, power comes from a third, a So the power comes from an, uh, some type of other entity, some powerful entity that's allowed you to access just a minuscule part of their power, right? And they get to choose how much you get and um, what kind you get, right? So, so if it's like a fire demon, obviously you're going to have access to fire magic. If it's an earth spirit of some sort or a nature spirit or, you know, a thunder god or something like that, like what it is is obviously what kind of magic it has. Um, access to. So that's the thing. Um, so removing access to the entity generally through removal of an object used to commune with that entity removes their access to the magic. So we're talking like wands, stabs, hats, shoes, books, whatever. You know, maybe you've got a table that lets you write beautiful sonnets or whatever it is. I don't care. Um, I, I don't plan on using that. But, but say you've acquired this, you know, rune stone and that rune stone gives you access to a stone god or an earth god or something. Well, if I take that stone away from you, it's the stone that lets you communicate with the god. So I take that stone away from you, you no longer have access to your magic, right? That's important. That's going to matter. Um, so the extent of the sorcerer's power is tied directly to the entity, what type, how strong, so you're going to get a lot more um, power from a god or an angel or something than you would from like a forest spirit, right? So you might meet a forest spirit and they might grant you power. You know, here, take this wand made from one of my bows and I'll grant you the ability to do X, Y, Z. That's one thing. Whereas having like 
you know, some type of carving or something made by a god. Say you're walking around with, like, God's talos with his Ten Commandments or whatever. Like, that's going to give you um, different kinds of powers, right? So that that's, that's that, all right? What type, how strong. Um, and how pleased that entity is with you at the time. So because this power is external, it's not something you are taking from them. It is something they are granting to you, meaning they can take it away whenever the hell they want. So if you make them mad, they will stop giving it to you or make it hurt you. So for example, um, the example we used about the lightning earlier, right? So I have somehow found some cloud god and convinced it to help me or whatever. And in exchange, I'm going to do some, you know, worshipful things or whatever. Um, say I piss the cloud god off, right? So instead of me using this um, bit of glass, you know, where, where the lightning has struck the, the sand and, and made this bizarre sculpture. And if I hold this sculpture, I can call down lightning. Um, so the next time I try to use it, I've made the cloud god mad because I'm not holding up my end of the bargain. I have not built the temple to the cloud god that I was supposed to, and, and he's really pissed at me, right? So the next time I try to call down lightning, I call it down onto myself instead of where I wanted it to go. That sort of thing. Because gods are petty and vengeful. Okay. Let's just include that there, petty and vengeful and their powers, nope, wrong there. And their powers are not unlimited, right? So, so consider old, like Greek and Roman gods, right? They had a thing that was within their purview, right? So you'd have like a god of war, you'd have a god of love, you had a god of the hearth, you had a god of, you know, uh, the forge you had, you know, and whatever it is, that's their purview. Like the God of lightning can't all of a sudden just create a river. That's not, that's not within his field of power. So I'm talking like those kinds of gods rather than the like all powerful God of like Judeo Christian world. Right. Okay. Who has it and how did they get it? Um, anybody can use this type of magic if one, they access to the entity and two, they are able to successfully convince the entity to grant them power. And this is important. Uh, you don't need to have magic already in order to use sorcerer's power because it's not your magic you're using. And the reason this is important is later on, um, I'll have some kids that are raised, you know, one of them has innate magic and one of them doesn't and the one without it gets really jealous and then, of course, this comes in. So, um, it's in like the third book. I already have these plotted out, by the way. That's what these papers are back here, is me, <laughs> me like, working out story. Mm. Types of magic. Okay, so. When I say types of magic, I'm thinking sorcery, when I think of it, it's more elemental magic, but not in the, I'm going to throw a fireball at you, right? Um but not right so you might cause an earthquake you might start a fire um that refuses to go out you might um, cause lightning to strike or call forth a storm. Cause lightning to strike. So we're talking like God level powers, right? You're just a mortal human or whatever you happen to be, depending on what gets all of it. Not everybody in the world is human, by the way. There are many sentient creatures 
or beings or races that are not human. Um, more on that in a minute. Um, so you would not, for example, be able to say, I want to strike you with lightning. Doesn't work that way. You might be able to call forth the storm that has lightning strike all around you though, and you might get hit or I might get hit if I'm too close, whatever. Um, so that sort of thing, right? Like it's not, you're not completely in control because again, you are just using the God's power they kind of get to choose what happens with it. So I think that that's really important that you you basically say, you know, yes, you have access to this godlike magic, but you're not a god. <laughs> you, you don't get to choose exactly how it works. All right, reliability. I think the reliability of this is contingent on how pleased the entity is with you at that time. If you fall out of favor, the magic might stop working or it might turn on you. Okay. All right. So those are the three or two that I pretty much had worked out in my head. This is the third one that I don't quite have worked out. And the reason that this came about was um, I wanted to do some stuff that isn't covered by these other two. So I specifically want somebody to be able to, for example, communicate with animals in such a way that the animals can understand them. The animals can't speak back, but they can understand them. And we're not talking like telling your dog to sit. We're talking like, you know, um, go get Uncle Steven, you know, so your dog goes and gets Uncle Steven, specifically Uncle Steven and brings him back, right? Um, One-sided conversational sort of things. I wanted people to be able to... Um, get plants to grow more vigorously or in certain places, um, have influence over potentially weather patterns, rainfalls, climate, that sort of thing, uh, natural world around them. It's all tied to nature and therefore is all slow. So we may have to give up the animal talking thing. I just thought that that would be kind of cool, but it's a little fast, right? Um, I want it to be very slow and cyclical. So for example, um, maybe there's a disease that's sort of sweeping through uh, a tribe, right? So their people are getting sick, they're really lethargic, they're having a hard time, they don't feel well. Maybe it's food poisoning, maybe they've just got a bug, who knows. They don't have the technology to identify that, by the way, it's all very, like, very primitive. Um, so there's this illness and then I'm, I'm just kind of brainstorming here. If you have ideas, say so. Um, okay, so there's an illness and, and they're, they're trying to heal the illness. I think we should be able to harvest a part of a plant, maybe some leaves from a certain kind of plant, something that's very vigorous and hardy and grows a lot, maybe some kind of weed make a tea from the plant, give it to you. And over time, the more I do this, you start to sort of consume the plant's life essence. And then the plant kind of withers and dies. And as that happens, you kind of come back to health. So that's what I'm thinking where we're like rebalancing energy sort of things. Um, you know, maybe there's, this is where the druidism comes in. Maybe there's a blight on our crop, you know, um, or something like that. And we know without that crop, we're gonna starve to death. Winter's, winter's gonna come, we're not gonna have enough food, we're all gonna die. How do you get the crop to heal? Well, you have to give something up. Everything has to happen in balance because it's nature. So you take the life from something else in order to give it to the crop. Well, where do you take it from? What is the most valuable thing? Maybe you sacrifice a few kids. Maybe you sacrifice some animals and that doesn't work. And so you start using people, you know, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm talking about. When I say like Druidism, I mean like old school Druidism. We're like, if we're all going to die, like maybe it's a last resort, but we're not above, you know, killing the firstborn or, you know, whatever. Um, animals and people and whatever they're they're not 
um, you know, you, you say like nature magic and people are like, oh, flowers and kitties and, and no, not that kind of nature magic. <laughs> I'm talking like nature's kind of gnarly and she does some really wicked stuff. Um, and sometimes she's fickle and, <laughs> you know, if things get out of balance, she gets really mad. I, I'm talking like nature as an entity. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. All right, rule number one for the shamanistic druidism sort of thing. Everything has to be done in balance. Oh, let's go. The balance must be maintained. Okay. If the balance is not maintained, it will correct itself. Um, very slow magic works on the cycles of nature. Okay, so for example, I would not, you break your leg, I would not be able to walk in and like cast a spell on your leg and, and it just heals itself. It doesn't work like that. What I might be able to do is something like, <coughs> you to, oh, bless you. Something like we talked about earlier where, um, you know, maybe we wrap a poultice or wrap some herbs around your leg and then, you know, wrap that in fabric. And then like as your leg starts healing and as the bone starts sort of knitting together, the plants that I took those leaves from um, or the things in that area sort of die off, right? Or, um, you know, maybe I take some bones out of another living thing. Maybe you're really, really sick, so I take some bones out of another living thing and I, I use them around your broken leg and then that sort of helps your bone knit. That sort of stuff, right? So not necessarily ingredient-based, but um, cause and effect, that, like uh, energy transfer sort of thing, right? It's all sort of wishy-washy in my head. I haven't quite got it all nailed down yet. All right. Who has it and how did they get it? Um, you'll notice I'm doing the same questions for all of them. It's because when I'm writing it, I need to know that about how it works, right? So does this person have it? Maybe. Um, how did they get it? I think it's hereditary. Follows family lines. But I think it's very limited, right? Like, I think it's kind of one of those, like, you have it because your father was a witch doctor and his father was a witch doctor and his mother was a witch doctor and, and it just kind of passes on. Um, and so you learn, you have it, but you also have to learn it, right? Follows family lines, but you have to learn how it works and you teach yourself to see the balance. So this part, the shamanism, is going to be coming from um, places like the Dandri Marshes and the Ajima Steppe. So the Dandri Marshes is this like wet swampland sort of thing, right? They live on uh, barge houses or pole houses and they kind of get around on these canoe things, like kind of like gondolas where they like navigate with a stick. Um, the Dandre marches are extremely dangerous. There are things in there that can and will eat you. But for some reason, they don't eat the locals. Um, probably because they taste terrible. Uh, a lot of the people in the Dandre marshes have, like, webbed feet and webbed fingers. And some of them look a little strange. Like, they, like they're sort of um, inbred, maybe, or maybe interbred with some other species that are kind of native to the area, and they're all a little weird, and they have their own sort of magic, and that's where this comes in. So these guys, and then the guys at the Ajma Steppe, which are sort of in my head loosely based on um, kind of the Mongols, where they're like a mount-driven tribal warrior system sort of thing. Um, that's all sort of like, it's not about territory, it's about how many mounts you have, that's how you display wealth, that sort of thing. Okay, types of magic and spellcraft. 
I'm going to say the type of magic, we're going to call it energy transference, right? Life must come from somewhere, could be applied somewhere else. Life and death are Okay, so to heal a bone, heal a bone, you take a bone from some living thing, killing it, obviously, um, to heal upset blood, stomach illness or something like that. Let's just call it illness. You, um... What do we say? Oh, right. <laughs> really? Are you <laughs> singing Witch Doctor? <laughs> Ooh, e, uh, sorry. I'm gonna be in my head all night now. <laughs> uh huh. And then he shook my head. Okay. Might take leaves from a plant, drinks the tea, they begin to heal, they've consumed the plant's light force. So you can see how that wouldn't heal you per se, but it might give you enough life or enough energy that your body can heal itself, right? The goal is not to heal you, but to um, to, to facilitate your body healing itself, right? Yeah, yeah. So later on, when I'm making dinner and I'm dancing around singing that song, I'm like, bumping up against you because you know it's gonna happen <laughs> um not very relies how reliable is it it's not uh, heavily on balance which is easily offset by other things going on while you're waiting for nature to take its course so for example um, you do the, the, you have the crops that are failing, you sacrifice the firstborn, um, or you sacrifice the baby that was born on the day that the crops were planted, for example. Um, and you know, you, you spread the blood on the soil and the crops are starting to kind of come back, but then there's a hail storm and the hail just kind of knocks all the stalks down. Well, your crop is ruined, but it's not because the magic didn't work, it's because something else interceded, intervened, something like that, uh, or a fire or something like that. All right, so there is the rough outline of our magic system. These three things are going to play heavily in the books. I'm not going to add other magic systems to it. I want to stick with these three because I think that between the three of them, they will do what I need them to do. You've got sort of witchy woo woo uh, blood magic stuff. Um, I say blood magic because blood is an ingredient, right? Like blood, spit, hair, um, skin, uh, leavings, clothing, that sort of thing. Like all of those are reagents or ingredients, right? So the witchcraft, which is ingredients based, the sorcery, which is um, celestial entity, God based, and then the shamanism, druidism, which is sort of nature magic operating on the cyclical power of nature. So then what we're going to do is come, what is this? Oh, okay. We're going to come in here. Um, and I'm actually going to go cook dinner here in a bit, but what, then we're going to come in here and we're going to kind of flesh that out. Like what are some individual like spells that you might cast for witchcraft? How would you go about making a love potion, for example, or making a good luck charm that's actually lucky, you know, those sorts of things. So um, 
I feel like those are going to kind of come about as I'm writing and I don't know that I necessarily need to like come up with a bunch ahead of time so much as like oh I'm gonna put this kind of magic this person's gonna have access to this kind of magic okay they want to do this now how would they do that and operate within these rules and then once I've done that like once it works it works all the time right so once I've con conceived of a way to like make a love potion well what's a love potion a love potion's a binding spell okay well how do you do a binding spell well I need something from the person that is um, being bound so say I'm trying to make a love potion to make Mort fall in love with me <laughs> Mort's my husband by the way he's right up there um, uh huh <laughs> say I'm, try I'm trying to make a love potion for Mort to fall in love with me well you need something from me like hair or blood or spit or something because you want him to fall in love with me so you need part of me in there and you need something from him um well he's gonna consume it so maybe not but then you need something to like carry it because like otherwise i could just spit in his mouth so you need some kind of um forgetful thing so maybe like an herb that kind of makes you forget or flowers that make you forget or pollen or opiate or something like that um, you know, and then, uh, say you have to break his heart to mend it. Say he's already married to somebody else, but I want him. So now we have to make him forget his love for his existing wife to fall in love with me. He's already married to me, by the way, but in our speculative world, um, <laughs> I know everybody who knows more is like, what? <laughs> okay. So, um, Anyway, so you need something to like sever the tie with his existing love and make him forget his love for her and replace it with love for me. And then, you know, it's got to go beyond just being infatuated, right? Like I want my hooks in him. I want him for a long time. So, so now we need four things to do it. And then I have to get him to drink it and it has to be done in a certain way. So figuring out kind of what all that looks like as you go along. But I feel like developing that while I'm writing is going to be a better tack than try to like come up with all the things I might need um ahead of time ew you don't you don't want me to spit in his mouth <laughs> some people are into that you know <laughs> sorry anyway all right so I'm gonna get to work on that and I'm gonna eat well I'm gonna cook and then I'm gonna eat this is a lot of fun um what you know what's really funny what kind of got me started going down this path is this this is, I was listening to a, um, I don't know if it was a podcast or a YouTube, like, documentary sort of situation, but they were talking about Appalachian witchery and how it, it's very, like, actions-based, very reagents-based, very, like, if you do this thing, then this will come sort of stuff. Um, and it, it was things like, you know, throw a towel over a fence post and put a bucket underneath it and then you can milk the towel and you'll get milk even if you don't have a cow, if you're a witch, um, and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, that you can gather up some of your hair and put it into a ball and then whisper to it to go and spy on your enemy and the hairball will like roll into their kitchen and like hide under the cabinets and, and you'll be able to hear what they're saying because it's your hair, that sort of stuff. Um, so I, th I thought it was really interesting and the, the way that they've sort of used what we would consider mundane objects, you know, driving, uh, or, or holding a nail and saying the person's name over and over and over again until the nail is the man and the man is the nail and then hammering the nail into the tree and, um, the tree dies because the nail is iron so it poisons the tree and eventually the tree dies and when the tree dies the man dies because you put the man into the tree um that sort of stuff and i just thought that that was all really cool um so yeah that that's where this came from i don't know if this is big enough that you guys can see it but uh um these sort of descriptions of uh trouble for critters <laughs> yes um, yeah, we're just gonna all make a bunch of tribbles and send them after our enemies and use them as listening devices. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or like, like the ability to 
somehow curse someone's bed sheets so that there was like a demon or a bad spirit or ghost or something in their bed sheets and um at night the sheets will try to smother them or strangle them or something like that like the idea that you could do something like that and and how terrifying it would be if you lived in a world where that was real where that could really happen um so i was listening to this um podcast or show or whatever it was that i don't even remember i think it was i think it was on youtube um and uh yeah it got me thinking i'm like okay well i've got all these ideas like left over from this conan server that i used to run i used to run an rp server for conan and then you know god this, this is really cool this concept of like using really mundane objects to do really fantastical things and wouldn't it be neat if you had like a whole culture like a whole tribe of witches and they were all witches so they were all like super paranoid about like watching out for everybody else like you know i don't want you in my house because you might get a hold of my hair or my toenail clippings or something and that puts me at risk like what if what if your whole village was witches like everybody was witches and they could all do these horrible things to each other like how paranoid would you be so i made an island of them and that's where these books came from so uh yeah anyway that's all i've got for today i'm gonna keep working on these spells and uh go make dinner